Oh yeah, Sony Fanboy is trying a Canon camera for the first time. I got some opinions, things I need to say. Let's get on with it. What's up y'all, Tyshirt Terry Warfield, back in the wilderness. Hope you're having a great day so far. Remember to be thankful for your life today because a lot of people did not get that luxury. So, let's get on with the meat and potatoes. The Sony Fanboy, Sony user, a lot of y'all know I've been shooting Sony cameras for some years. I typically only talk about Sony cameras on this channel with the occasional like news review or something like that. But as a whole, I usually shoot Sony. And you know, I'm not loyal to Sony, but it just seems like right now they offer the best I'll get into that in a second, but right now Sony fits the build the best for me. But I've always wanted to test out Canon cameras, and I've used some, but I've never got a chance to actually get hands on nitty gritty with it. And what do you know? I went to NAB, made some contacts, shook some hands, kissed a few babies, and now <laughs> Canon is a huge supporter of the channel. So big shout out to Sony and big shout out to Canon for, you know, I know I got a, you know, small channel, whatever you want to call it, but both companies have said, you know what, Terry, we love what you do. We're going to send you whatever you want, anytime you want. And I said, fine, send it over. So right now, the EOS R6 and the 50 millimeter RF 1.2. This oh, this lens is a beast. Canon sent this over. Now the A7 IV is mine, but Sony did send over the 50 millimeter F 1.2 gangsta mode. Now in this video, I'm not comparing these two cameras. What I want to do is share my user experience as a longtime Sony user who's trying Canon for the first time. And there's some notable things I think Sony users really need to understand about Canon cameras that maybe you haven't known. And I want to talk to you about some of those things. Now I will be doing a detailed comparison, between these two cameras, but this is not that video. The other thing I wanna say before we move forward to get actually into the meat and potatoes that, you know, every manufacturer offers amazing cameras and lenses and stuff at this point. There's no reason why, if you have one of these newer cameras from like the last three or four years, that you should be putting out trash material, trash photos, trash videos. And if you are, then the problem is not the cameras. The problem is you're trash, you need to up your level so that you're not trash anymore okay so with that being said i'm not saying that either brand is better than the other each one obviously has its strong suits disadvantages you need to find the one that works best for you uh as far as what cameras i've tried from canon the r6 is the only one that i've actually went through uh i've used a ton of sony cameras so some of the things i may mention or i may you know talk about i might have missed some information because i haven't used all of their cameras but feel free if i did say anything wrong misquote anything feel free to say it in the comments just do it respectfully because if you don't i have to will smith you let's get on with it all right, so although I'm not making a direct comparison between these two cameras, um, I think it's fair to tell you how long I've been using both. So I've had the a7 IV basically since it came out, and the EOS R6 I've been using for like two weeks. So I've had plenty of time to get to know this camera, plus a bunch of other Sony cameras. I've only had about two weeks to get to know the Canon, but I have pretty much, I think, learned a whole lot about it. So I think the first major thing between the two systems, not specifically these two cameras, but the two systems, it's user experience. And I like to equate this to Android versus Apple. Now, I love Android and Apple, but both have their respective strengths and weaknesses. So let's talk about that. Android phones remind me of Sony, where Android phones always have the latest and greatest features. They always packed to the brim with technology, new stuff, stuff that sometimes we don't even need, but it's there. Also, with each iteration of a new camera they make like huge leaps forward when it comes to the technology inside them now phones are kind of slowing down but you get what i'm trying to say sony is known for packing the latest and greatest features in every camera and typically there's not a whole lot of compromises sometimes there's some cripples here and there but they aren't super duper heavy and a lot of times they aren't deal breakers now the byproduct of that is because there's so many features and stuff packed into one camera as a lot of y'all know the menus have been not good over the last couple years now with the a7 IV the a7s3 menus have gotten a whole lot better but they still don't hold a candle to canon cameras i like to equate canon cameras to apple devices apple typically runs the smoothest they last for years right you typically never have operating problems with apple products the problem is a lot of times a lot of the features that everybody freaking wants you can't get them because it's a closed ecosystem the advantage though is they work and they work super duper well they are very intuitive it's almost like apple devices think for you like you might select something and it's automatically going to give you hmm, what's next in that thought chain let me give them all of those options 
right after that. And that is Canon for you, man. The user experience on this camera is top notch. And I know all Canon cameras are like this. Just menu design, how quick it is, how every single menu is very, very well thought out. I love how with the touch screen, you can actually manipulate any part of the menu from the screen, whereas on the Sony, like even on the a7 IV to a7S III, yeah, you can change the menu by touching it, you can select a lot of settings by touching it, but when it comes to things like changing your exposure, change your ISO, or changing this or changing that, a lot of stuff you still can't do on Sony, and all of that stuff you can do with Canon. I'm gonna be honest, it is a much smoother experience, the animations are better, the menu is much more responsive, much more fluid, and as a whole, it just feels like a much more refined product. So that's my biggest comparison point between the two systems is user experience. And for a lot of people, that is huge. All right, the next thing your boy wanna talk about is build quality, construction. Like how do Canon cameras feel in a hand compared to Sony? And I think this is a big deal. So listen, I'm not saying that either one is bad, but I am saying that I have an opinion. So I'm gonna move the Canon out the way. Let's start with Sony. Sony feels good. Like this is the a7 IV with the 50 millimeter f1.2 gangsta mode on here and sony has come a long way when it comes to ergonomics remember like the a7 II, the a7 III, the a60 you know a6000 series uh they didn't exactly feel premium the a7 IV, a7s3 a7r4 all of sony's cameras with this new body design yo these do feel freaking premium they look good i do like the industrial look you got like sharp angles and stuff like that and you know all of that good stuff so I've never found this to feel cheap or like not premium until I held a Canon camera. So let's bring the R6 into the picture. First thing you notice with this camera, and I know we aren't making direct comparisons here, but the R6 is a bigger camera, right? But what I do want to point out is how it feels. So. I do prefer the way the Sony camera looks. I do like the sharp angles and stuff like that. And I do appreciate how Sony cameras are smaller. But when it comes to like how it feels in the hand, I got to give the edge to the Canon camera. It feels so much better in the hand in comparison with Sony cameras. Also, I feel like the material, whatever they use, I don't know if this is some type of like rubberized compound on the outside. It feels... Like it feels better than what's on the Sony. And it's very small, you know what I'm saying? The difference is very, very small, but this just feels more premium than the Sony. When we talk about the switches, the dials, on Canon, everything does feel better. The joysticks feel better, like the scroll wheel on the back feels very premium. The screen, uh, screen is pretty much equal, but I will also tell you that the viewfinder the field of view on this I don't know if it's a bigger viewfinder or what but it's like looking through a bigger window in comparison to any Sony cameras that I've tried So when it comes to like build quality, I got to give the edge to Canon It's not by a lot, but it does feel better in hand than Sony cameras Now the next thing I want to touch on real quick are lenses looks like my freaking white balance just changed. You see, this is why you don't never leave your cameras on auto white balance, but it is what it is. All right, Sony G Master Glass is literally best of the best glass, right? It's amazing. RF glass is also freaking amazing. Now, there are some small differences when it comes to how these two types of lenses operate. Sony is all E-mount, which we're gonna talk about that a little later in this video, and I got RF glass right here. So, with Sony's G lenses and also Sony's GM lenses, and actually, some of Sony's non-G or G lenses have customizable buttons on the outside, okay? Now, these buttons you can customize to do stuff like, you know, uh, exposure lock, you could do focus hold, you could do all types of stuff with these buttons, you could customize them. But one thing I wanna point out on RF glass is the system that they made out for these lenses. So, although the RF lens doesn't have any buttons on it, it does have this front dial. And this front dial, you can literally customize, just like Sony, to whatever you want. The difference is, like with this, I can change this to represent, for example, ISO. So, that is super clutch, yo. If I'm shooting something, I can just change this or turn this wheel on the fly and change my ISO or change my shutter speed without needing to look at the back of the camera or touch the back of the camera. And that is huge to me. So that's a major dub for Canon when it comes to glass. And also uh, Canon does make a filter where you can drop in an ND filter behind the glass, which is another super dope thing about Canon. All in all, lens quality wise, I think it's neck and neck. Uh, L series glass, 
G Master, both super good. But all in all, I got to give the edge to Canon when it comes to how does it feel, build quality overall. Okay, got it. Bye. Hey, sorry if I'm a little paranoid. You know, I got like 10 grand worth of cameras. Oh, about probably about 12 grand. I'm using my A7S III right now. And Cleveland get wild sometimes, so I gotta be careful. But the next thing that I wanna talk about real quick is connectivity, and I gotta give this edge to Canon. Now, the one exception is the Sony a7 IV. This has Sony's new and improved connectivity system, which I'll link a video to that that I just made right up there. This camera kinda is exempt to what I'm about to say because it's so good. And hopefully Sony's new cameras, I, I fully expect them to put the same type of like connectivity system that's in here and their newer cameras. But all of the other Sony cameras can't hold a candle to Canon cameras. And I know Canon has had this type of, you know, wireless system for a long time. It's been really good on Canon the whole time and Sony is just now catching up. But I will say it is a much more friendly and reliable experience connected to your phone or tablet or computer to retrieve your photos or do like remote shooting or live shooting where you're looking at the screen and you can see yourself and change all your video parameters and all that stuff i got to give the edge to canon but sony is definitely making a comeback with the a7 IV so now that we got that out the way the next thing i want to talk about is the lenses because this is a huge freaking deal between the two camera systems let's get it I'm probably making my Sony fam all mad because I'm giving all of these W's to Canon right now, but this is where Sony is going to get some respect back, right? So, one of the major, in my opinion, factors when it comes to both of these camera systems is lens ecosystem, and this is probably the biggest thing out of everything I'm going to talk about today. So, Canon does have RF, right? This is an amazing new mount that Canon is using on the R6, the R5, and the R5C, and it's a great lens mount, you know what I'm saying? They even have an option, like I said, where you can get the adapter, uh, put the filters behind the lens. You know, you can change the features of the lens and all that stuff. But the problem with RF mount is, number one, most of the glass is super expensive. Number two, there's no real third-party support. Now, I know the Canon fanboy is about to be like, yo, Terry, just get an adapter and get some EF glass. And while that is valid, if I'm buying an RF camera, I don't want to go buy an adapter to use other lenses as my main camera and for my main lenses. If it's like stuff that, like I wanna use vintage lenses and stuff like that, that's a different story. But when it comes to my main lenses, I'm not trying to use an adapter. Where Sony really pulls ahead is E-mount. Now for y'all that don't know, E-mount is Sony's mount that they use for all their Sony mirrorless cameras. And the benefit of E-mount is Sony offers crop sensor, Sony offers full frame, Sony also has cinema cameras and all of them use the same lens mount. So that means that I could take my full frame lens and use it on my crop sensor camera or my crop sensor lens and put it on my full frame camera. I probably messed those words up and with caveats, but it works. And that is a huge decided factor. The other thing is third party support. Canon does have third party support on their EF glass, but when it comes to RF glass, they're hugely missing a lot of third party support. And they're also missing a lot of cheaper options for the RF mount for people that do want to consider native Canon glass. So like Sony, there's options like Viltrox, there's options like Tamron, there's options like Sigma, there's options like Mikey and a bunch of other ones. And some of them rival the quality of Sony's own glass. So in my opinion, that is a huge factor. Sony literally has a lens, whether it's native Sony or third party for everybody in every category of you know what you can afford so i gotta give the major w to sony on that front the second thing that i gotta give the major advantage to sony on when it comes to systems is customizability so look i'm gonna give an example on sony cameras you can pretty much customize every button switch to whatever you want to do on this camera now some of you will argue oh terry i don't need to customize all the buttons because on a canon camera i have the touch screen which i can manipulate the entire touchscreen to do whatever I want. That is a valid point. But for the vast majority of people, they wanna be able to customize literally every single button and switch and function on the camera. Sony lets you do that for the most part. Now, I'm gonna give you a specific example on Canon. This is the R6, and I know this doesn't represent all of Canon's cameras because the R5 does not have this problem, but there's a C1, a C2, and a C3. These are customizable modes that you could put the camera in. Well, on a Sony, I also have that. I have a custom one, two, and three, and I can set that up however I want to, but on the R6, I can only set that up 
for photography. So I can't set up like a 24 frames a second option and a 60 frames a second option and a 120 frames per second option. Whereas on the Sony, I can do that. So that's one specific example. But as a whole, Sony cameras, you can tend to customize more than Canon cameras. That might be something that's a major deal to you. It may not be. If not, oh well, at least I told you. I'm almost done yapping. Let's get to the next part. All right, the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is also a big deal and may possibly be like system defining for you, right? And that's freaking color science. And I gotta give this dub to Canon. Canon is known for its color science. Now, I gotta give credit to Sony because Sony has come a long freaking way when it comes to improving the color science, especially like the A7S III is fantastic. And the A7 IV is real good too. And then Sony cinema cameras have Cinetone and all of that color science. That's not really the issue and what we're talking about. We've been talking about like the mirrorless cameras that they've had this entire time. Canon does have log profiles on their cameras. You can also adjust things like clarity, saturation, and all that stuff built into them. Sony has log profiles, but it also has a bunch of different picture profiles, gammas, and all that stuff. You can customize the gammas on Canon cameras too, but not to the degree that you can on Sony cameras. Now, if we talk about about like the default picture profile right out the camera nothing changed no s cinetone no c log or nothing like that the canon absolutely has the more pleasing image when it comes to video and also when it comes to photo more specifically we're talking about skin tones canon seems to just always get the skin tones right every time i see canon footage right out the camera i'm like man that is amazing that you didn't have to tweak that literally at all typically on sony cameras when it comes to skin tones you got to remove a little bit of green you know it's not that bad with the newer sony cameras but the previous sony cameras it was a big deal but overall when it comes to color science, I gotta give the edge to the Canon. Now, obviously, all of the newer cameras, the image looks freaking fantastic. Again, if you can't get a good image out of either one of these, you just suck. And when it comes to raw photos, obviously, you got all of that flexibility out of both systems. I find Sony tends to have a little bit more dynamic range, at least on the cameras that I've tested uh, and the videos I've watched and stuff like that. But I think we split in hairs at this point. To be honest, I gotta give the edge for color science to Canon. Yeah, I do. So Terry, you just spent the last 10, 15 minutes telling me about all of these nuanced things between both systems. Which one should I buy? Which one is better? And to be honest, I can't freaking tell you because as I said in the beginning of this video, both camera systems are fantastic. I'm gonna go back to the original analogy of Apple versus Android. Both of them are fantastic. You just need to find which one has the features that make the most sense to you. If user experience, intuitiveness, things like color science, uh, feel, grip, friendliness to use are a big deal to you, then you might wanna think about the Canon uh, system because it really has a lot of that stuff going for it in addition to amazing quality, in addition to great RF lenses and a whole collection of EF lenses you can, you know, you can still adapt to. But if you're into things like having the latest and greatest of features and you wanna be able to customize everything and you really want like all the tech in the camera that you can get plus amazing image quality and all of that stuff and the vast ecosystem of lenses is that you can get for Sony cameras then Sony might be what you need to think about just know that Sony is not as friendly to operate as Canon and you know with the colors sometimes you might have to work them a little bit more out of the Sony to get what you want versus the Canon again both of them have strengths and weaknesses you just need to find out which one has the most benefits for you so I got to give another huge shout out to Canon for being a huge supporter of the channel, sending me this gear. To Sony for sending all this gear, being huge supporters of the channel. Much love to both companies. And to you, the person watching this, I hope this video was at least some type of helpful. You know, I know I get on my tangents and run my mouth, but I tried to, you know, express what I feel like are the major key differences between the two systems and what it feels like using a Canon camera as a Sony fanboy and I really hope I was able to relay that point to you and help you make a decision or at least justify whatever system that you're invested in or thinking about being invested in. So with that being said, I'm getting out of here. Till next time, peace and chicken grease, Terry Warfield. Peace.